Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I'm playing in the Tier 10 American Auto Loading Heavy Tank. It is the T57 Heavy, and this vehicle, it's not featured enough on this channel. It's one of the most brutal tanks in World of Tanks, and it's one of my favorite vehicles for going to when, you know, you just want to deal some damage and you don't really give a darn. You kind of just have to hold down that mouse button and just kind of keep screaming until hopefully the enemy tank dies, or maybe you do. Now you could say you could do that in a lot of tanks, but the T-57 Heavy certainly does it better than pretty much all of the other heavy vehicles in the game, and that's because it has the highest DPM, nearly 3,100 DPM, with a 25 second magazine reload and only 2 seconds delay between each of its 120 millimeter shells. And so, sure, we took a shot there from the Revelerice and we bounced around from the Scorpion, but we put one in return and then two into the Gorilla and we got pretty unlucky that we were unable to connect the fourth. We could have dealt 1,600 damage within six seconds of the first shot. And just look how quickly this magazine is reloading again. When you use things like Cola and you've got Brothers in Arms on the vehicle and in ventilation as well, you really do start to hammer down that 25 second reload. It's more about like that, that 20 mark, which is absolutely crazy on this tank. Now, one thing I would not recommend doing on this vehicle is blind firing as many rounds as that. And the reason is that this tank doesn't carry much ammunition at all. It carries 36 rounds in total. Now, while that's not terrible, you are able to do 14,400 potential damage. This thing just seems to print damage so fast that it kind of feels that you don't want to waste the shots blind firing like that, even though it's so tempting, right? Unless you know that you're towards the end of the game. Maybe your doom is inevitable and you might as well get the rounds out, or you just think that you're not going to get the chance later on in the battle. Now, unfortunately for me, I, all those blind rounds, well, we're not going to find out whether they hit till the end of the game. We'll have to take a look at that. Or if I forget to, at least you're going to be able to see. But the gorilla actually fired a high explosive round at me. And I'm quite happy that the gorilla fired a high explosive round at me. Because the armor piercing rounds, well, if you get hit once, that's a third of your hit points gone from that 750 alpha. Actually, yeah, it is exactly a third. I thought, well, maybe it's just roughly a third. No, it's exactly a third because this tank has 2,250 hit points. And that seems to go a long way when you're trading with your opponents. The way that I love to play this vehicle is you take one, you deal four in return. And if you can do that, then you're going to have monstrous games. In fact, I think this is my highest average damage on any heavy tank in the game. Unsurprisingly, considering it's the highest DPM. Now, this is just where this, this tank is just mean, oh... Well, that's not very nice. Well, a bit of RNG kind of knocks us for the first shell. We put in the second, we put in the third, and we put in the fourth before the KV-4 even has time to react and pull back. And that is what is scary about this vehicle. Unlike something like a, a Kranvang, which takes, I think, three seconds between the shells to, to fully unload. That's just a bit too long. And even the 50... B has two and a half seconds delay between the shells. This thing just gets its full magazine out so quickly and sometimes that allows you, oh, we missed the tracks there though as we could have finished off the T32. But it just allows you to put an unprecedented amount of damage in for a heavy tank in a short period of time. But also this vehicle, it's, it's quite well armored really. We're talking about 152 millimeters on the turret and 228 on the front of the hull, but the side and the rear is garbage at about 44 and a half. So definitely watch out for that. But it does have that kind of boat-shaped hull, a lot like on the pattern. So as long as you're not getting shot by 150mm caliber guns, which are going to be able to overmatch you, you can kind of angle the tank to the side and bait the shots. And the turret is the most annoying thing to shoot at for me. I hate shooting at American auto-loading heavy turrets because of the design. Because of the fact that it's got this, like, pipe coming off the front, which means that outside of hitting the beak, it's very well angled. And so that means that unless you're really willing to fire heat rounds at this tank, you sometimes can struggle. But oh god, that lover, did he stand a chance? No. Oh darn, the ridge line absorbs the final shot from the Emil 2, but he backs off. And this versus Swedish heavy autoloaders, it's, it's kind of not even really a fair fight for them if you can get them on this level playing field. Of course, if they manage to go hull down against you, you're never going to penetrate them in the turret, and they're still fairly reliably going to be able to penetrate you. But if you kind of get them in the open plane like this, then it could buy a mill. Now, I lose my ammo rack, but I'm actually not going to repair my ammo rack immediately because why? I mean, I'm not reloading. An ammo racked tank doesn't have a worse reload for its magazine. So I might as well wait until I'm actually reloading to repair my ammo rack because maybe I would have needed to repair a track. So maybe something would have bounced off my gun. Maybe my engine would have got knocked out or something like that. And that might have been more useful than actually the ammo rack until I fire all my shells and I need to reload. Of course, when your ammo rack is damaged, you're kind of putting all of your eggs in one basket 
because if somebody damages your ammo rack further, then you can lose the turret of your tank. But I guess it's probably a, a risk worth taking. Now we've kicked so much butt in five minutes here at 5,600 damage that we have seen in five minutes that I'm starting to run low on my armor piercing rounds and I'm forced to fire a couple of heat rounds there into the Gorilla. Unfortunate stuff. Yeah, I don't like wasting these heat rounds in the T-57 Heavy, but you know, if you've done 5,600 damage and then you're forced to start firing premium rounds, well, uh, you know, beggars can't be choosers. And if you've done 5,600 damage, I think you've probably made enough credits to hopefully break even with the heat rounds. But we're going to have to see later on in the game. Oh, gosh. Bit of an annoying round there. We missed the T-54. Have to waste one more on him before we get to finish him off. Now, you might be noticing that we're, we're kind of missing quite a few shots. That's because the accuracy on this tank is 0.35. That's not terrible, but it's not great. But the main weakness of this tank is the 2.9 seconds aim time. And way, way, way back in the day, this vehicle used to have incredible aim time. I think two and a half seconds. And it was completely overpowered. Wargaming nerfed it because it was uh, one of the best tanks in the game. But in the end, it's still pretty darn powerful. Oh, Batchat! W what happened there with that shot? That went right through him. Well, we're going to have to take a look at that one in just a second. Surely we finished! Oh, gosh! Now, if the Batchat was counting, he would realize that we fired all four rounds at him. And surely he should just turn around and come after me. But maybe he saw the defender as well. And I guess the defender would finish him off. Or maybe the Bat Chatillon was just panicking and, and worried, I guess. Now I decided to load my three remaining armor piercing rounds. It's always so annoying in your auto loaders towards the end of the game. When you are left with those, those multiple, well, should we say, not even a full magazine of each type of ammunition left over. So, okay, one thing to remember as well, guys, is 6,949 damage dealt. We're going to have to see if we hit any of his blind shots earlier on in this game or not. And I'm just trying to hound down this bat chat to pick up my fifth kill, but it looks like he has run into another tier 10 vehicle. This time it is the German sniper. And while the bat chat puts one in, it's good night. French tier 10 medium. Okay, so moment of truth against this bat chantillon. Let's see exactly where those shells went. Okay, we're going to slow it down into 16 times. Okay, the shell has fired. Let's follow the shell. Where is that shell? Oh gosh, there's the tracer. Oh, you're kidding me. You're actually kidding me. What? <laughs> oh, oh, guys. Oh dear. Well, this doesn't happen all that often in World of Tanks. But I guess I was right. And you know what? This brings whole new meaning to when you hear your American commander go, that one went right through. So did we hit any of those blind shots? Oh, no, we didn't. We missed them all just shy of 7,000 damage dealt here. That was enough to get us a high caliber and a Confederate medal for killing six tanks that were subsequently killed by our allies. And that makes me even a little bit more salty about that ghost shell, considering it would have been just over 7k. Nevertheless, not a bad round for the T-57 Heavy. We blocked 1,500. 90 damage here which kept us in the game and even with the unfortunate running out of our armor piercing rounds and being forced to fire heat we still make 24,000 credits profit not too bad so today guys i know this video was a bit of a short one i i just apologize i've been really busy recently it looks like me and tanya are going to be moving house in the next few weeks and it's all hands to battle stations right now in the quickie baby household oh god i'm never gonna say that again and i'll try and make it up to you tomorrow where wargaming are releasing their new halloween game mode oh so spooky so i'll try and make a feature of that on the channel oh and also in other news creative assembly have released the mortal campaign today for total war warhammer which links up the sequel to the first title and so you can play with all of the factions and so tonight on stream i'm going to be getting out there starting a brand new gigantic mammoth scale campaign which apparently has 35 legendary lords 120 different factions 295 settlements to conquer in 268 different maps as well as 352 units and so i'm really looking forward to checking it out right now and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon